Father, we thank you for the beginning of another chapter of governance in Taraba State. We stand to honor you and present Taraba State to you. and programs that align with my vision, purpose and passion for Taraba. The path which has led me to this office has been filled with twists and turns. However, by providence, you, the people of Taraba State, have given me the mandate to deliver. And I stand here today to state my commitment to you. I ask us all to put our differences aside and come together as one to move Taraba forward. I can proudly say that His Excellency Governor Kefas have pro he has proof all doubting Thomas's that he has come with a patriotic zeal uh, and determination to move Taraba forward. And uh, you have seen just within uh, a couple of months he has done a lot. He has performed creditably well within the few weeks or say months of uh, since as assumption uh, of duties as, as the executive governor of uh, Taraba State, uh, he has been carrying the traditional rulers alone. The governor is approaching governors in the state with calmness. He's very meticulous in his approach to governors in Taraba State. I want to say emphatically clean and clear to the hearing of uh, all and sundry that so far the journey is so good with Dr. Kefas as a governor of Taraba State. Judging from what I've seen in his, uh, would I call them on the spot assessment of situations and declarations, especially as it concerns uh, education, security, provision of jobs for the youth and vulnerable. I think he has started well. Dr. Abu Kefas is a very intelligent, compassionate, and hard-working person. He is a visionary. He is indeed a visionary leader. leader. One of the things I would say is that um, God has blessed the state of Taraba um, with a very, very focused leader, 
and a leader that is proactive. And looking at the, the decisions he has made thus far within this period shows that he has the passion to be able to see that the state moves out of the state of decay, the state of um, abandonment, to the place of relevance in the community of nations and states. So he has been able to take a very, very strong steps. And in leadership, what makes the difference between a performing leader and non-performing leader is the ability to be able to take decisions decisively that will be able to make immediate impact on the people. We have seen a lot of governors, I mean, a governor who came to rule over Taraba and they have played their own part and gone. Everybody plays his own part based on his, his own political will. Uh, they have tried their best, but coming down to uh, uh, Governor uh, Dr. Kefas, he has a political will to see that uh, Taraba move forward. He has in mind how to govern Taraba. It's quite different with the other, uh, his predecessors. But because he has a political will, you see how Vigo, how he started. He started with zeal. He started with hope. He started to give Taraba what we have like him for some time. The executive governor, His Excellency uh, Kwanel Abuke, was so far so good. He has started uh, on the right footing, and uh, there are so many things that he has done in the last couple of days, in the last hundred days, uh, that shows us that um, uh, the journey so far is good, and the journey is going to be uh, good for the good people of uh, Taraba State. I give you an example. Uh, there are areas, uh, one of the key areas that uh, our people are very, very happy with uh, is in area of education. The job of a governor is a manager. And the first job of a manager when he comes in is defined everywhere in management. And that is exactly where I'm happy the governor started with. That is the first job of a governor is assessment. Assessment of issues. After assessment of issues is consultation. After consultation is drawing up of the most necessary and correct steps to be taken to achieve the objective of serving the best interests of the people of the state. So the first achievement he did, which I recognize in total, is the assessment. He is the first governor in Taraba who started visiting our most serious problems. Operation Keep Taraba Clean. Upon assuming office, Dr. Abu Kefas swiftly initiated operations Keep Jalingo Clean, a pivotal step in maintaining the cleanliness of Jalingo Street. A significant facet of this endeavor was the recruitment of men and women who are remunerated monthly by the government to undertake the vital task of street sweeping and drainage clearing. To confront the, spect the, the specter of unemployment head on, Governor Abu Kefas employed youths and women as sanitation agents, not only preserving the beauty of Jalingo, but also offering meaningful employment opportunities to our citizens. This practical step is a testament to our commitment to tackling joblessness and enhancing our overall quality of life. Sako de Zan Kemda Gamma Gomna Megirma, Gomna Taraba, Mungo de Massa, 
mun kara gode masa da shi da wannan hikimar da Allah ya bashi ya kawo mana ya cire talauci a kasar nan nan taraba muna kara ce ubangiji Allah ya kare shi and the, we thank God for the work i'm a student due to this work now i'm improving and not transport is not my problem now so i thank God for the work the only thing i will say now is we thank him for this opportunity he gives to the youth, the old people, the widows. So we have nothing to sell him unless we tell him we thank him. We thank him and the Lord bless him, give him more courage and wisdom to rule more. The uh, KFAS moving forward sanitation is, uh, is embodied with the responsibility of ensuring that the gutters and all the drainages are kept clean to avoid uh, the issues of erosion. You find out that when the water, when the gutters are all filled up with dirty, there is no way where water will pass. You find out that the water will now escalate to, to the road, which is very, very bad. Ban on mining and rosewood processing. Dr. Abu Kefas took a decisive step in signing Executive Order Number no. Three, effectively suspending all forms of mining activities within Taraba State. Governor Kefas underscored that the motivation behind this order lies in the curbing of the rampant illegal mining activities. To ensure the effective implementation of this order, a dedicated task force was established. Their efforts in enforcing the executive order have been commendable. So the regulation on uh, mining activities within Taraba State, it's a good thing, especially for those of us that uh, are in the economic development um, aspect of the state. Because any time an area um, you have raw materials leaving, you know, being exported without adding benefits to it, it reduces uh, the economic activity within the area or in our case within Taraba State. So the regulation of the mining activities is a very good thing. And um, I think we as Taraba, as citizens of Taraba State, should be looking forward to not only um, you know, just get mining, you know, for minerals and things like that. But we should also look at the aspect of benefications of those resources because when you have the beneficiation aspect, you have job creations and um, the benefits and the income of those beneficiation activities remain within the state and um, that adds to the economic development of the state. Energy. His Excellency Dr. Abu Kefas um, has made energy one of his major focus in the state because of its importance, especially in terms of economic growth, economic development. If you look at the emerging economies today, energy is key. And that was one of the reasons that proponated him to go and um, inspect the Kashimbila Dam. The Kashimbila Dam is not a state-conceived project. It was initially for um, for damming um, the water, but eventually it was utilized for electricity generation. So right now it has a capacity of 40 megawatts. The inspection of His Excellency was to ascertain why we have such stranded resources and why it's not utilized for the state holistically. So one of the things, um, one of the solutions that begotted his trip to Kashimbila was how to be able to transfer that power to areas that it's needed. Pension. Eh sana akwai maganar pension wasu sun kai shekara kusan 10 a sa su a payroll na pension ma an gagara amma da zuwan Agu Kefas bai wuce wata daya ba aka samu aka biya su wasu sun mutu wasu sun galabaita amma kaman ni kaman ni for the first time a wajen shekara biyar na ga baba na da dariya a fuskan shi wata rana da ya dawo gida da ce me ya faru ya ce wai an so ma biyan shi pension to kaga wannan ai abun farin ciki ne mutun yayi aiki shekara 35 abun da yana nan a aje ne ba wai sabon magana ba wasu gwamnatin baya sun rike shi daga zuwan shi ya zo ya biya kaga wannan ai abunda mu za mu yi farin ciki da shi ne sannan muna masa adu'a 
Allah sa abun da ya so mun nan ya ci gaba ina da dama wani fafana ya kusan shekaru da dama kusan shekara takwas bai samu wannan kudin ma amma da zuwa wannan gwamna ya zo ya san ya biya shi wannan kudin har mun samu cin gaba ya dan siya mana masara a gida har muka cito youth economic and security summit in a historic move, the Taraba State Government organized its first ever summit focused on youth engagement, economic development, and security. Governor Kafus underscored that the summit served as a crucial platform for constructive exchanges of ideas and meaningful dialogues aimed at tackling the challenges facing the state. The purchase of 850 tractors for farmers. When it comes to planning, when you're able to get your plans right, you have solved the problem by, by, by 50%. What his administration has done, I mean the administration of Dr. Agbo Kefas, the executive governor of uh, Taraba State has done, is to achieve about like 100%. Talking about the plans, we have, we have gone past the level of um, uh, saying we are going to plan. Now we have finished planning and we are the verge of releasing you know the plans and um, like uh, someone would say uh, when you have no plan you have just planned to fail the ministry of agriculture and food security have initiated a number of a number of agro-based uh, programs to support local farmers across the states um, one of such programs is the procurement of um, 750 mini tractors and 100 uh, cabrio uh, compact tractors for distribution to farmers across the states. Uh, this is intended to boost mechanized agriculture. Education, termed as the bedrock of civilization, has no doubt suffered a severe setback in northern Nigeria in modern times. In northeast to be precise, the whiplash of this menace has caused illiteracy to ravage the very fabric of the society's development, creativity and innovative drive. Thuggery, unproductivity, armed robbery, mediocrity, poverty, and a host of other negative symptoms are a direct reflection of the bankruptcy in this sector. Only a visionary leader prioritizes education whose gaze transcends the present now. The moving forward trade has made a grand visitation to the educational sector for a strategic reformation. Free education in all public primary and secondary schools in Taraba State his Excellency Dr. Abukefels came on board. He quickly declared a state of emergency on the education sector. And uh, not long after that, he declared free basic education in the state. To the base of my knowledge and from the interaction and all his presentation I've seen is that even when our governor was governor-elect, he sent out a team of experts to the state to study the education sector, all the schools, and bring back a report. And from the reports he got, he realized that uh, the education system in the state is in a deplorable state. It was no longer functional, and it needs to be revived. Education, they say if you say education is costly, try ignorance. For the past uh, decades, you just go to a school, more especially in primary school. You see, you won't meet teachers in the school. You only see in some school, you see children sitting on the, uh, on the, on the floor. Some take their classes on the tree, under the tree. But as he came, you see how he started. He started giving contracts, started awarding contracts to see that the schools have been re renovated. And he feel that the trees have, should have a, a, the classroom renovated and they should have a, their chairs to sit on. Life is very, very important. And 
education is key. It is key in the sense that um, without education, there is nothing that can move forward. Education is very, very vital. And for him to have said that um, to bring the policy of, of free education, it is nothing that has never happened in Taraba State. This is the face of his kind. And um, you know that most of our people are in adult poverty. That is, uh, our people are, don't have enough, you know, to, to take their children to school. And that is why we have a lot of youth roaming on the streets doing nothing. So by introducing free education at the, at the secondary primary school level, it is going to help in a no small manner, in a no small way, in making sure that all those parents who are not able to take their children to school, to take them to school. And uh, there are a lot of talents, you know, there are a lot of talents among our, 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 our youth, but they don't have the opportunity. So opportunity has come for them to send their children, for the parents to send their children to school and to make sure that uh, these, these children actually get the desired education. The governor has impressed me and has impressed the people of Taraba State by declaring state of emergency in education. The standard of education has really fallen, uh, has fallen seriously. And by declaring state of emergency, I'm sure he is coming up with strategy that would definitely uh, uplift education. Free education in primary school and secondary school is a good idea. Our people are agrarian, you know, they are farmers, small scale farmers, whatever they get, they used to spend in paying school fees. So by declaring state of emergency and paying uh, and getting them go to school, free education is a welcome idea. Da, zen doka darun kununa yawa roblona. Ina yawa na ni makudi, nde zen bia mayara na school fees. To, ala yazo abude hanya na shika guna na noma na samu dangeda imbare nje nzisir nzo mbiya mayara uh, school fees. To yanzu babu hanya ba abinde zamu yi mbiya mayara kudi makaranta. Se gashi muna na wae wagari yo se muka gani abu kefa ziyache ito. Gashi ya rege matalaka wa aiki. Munche mwishi mungode ale kara mishi alibarka. Ale nona mishi abinde ze yi matalako yi adunia na ami. 50% reduction of school fees in all tertiary institutions within the state. And he has also slashed the tuition fee in the university, Taraba State University, by 50%. It's a good idea. Let me give a typical example. One of our uncles has children in school, in, the, in primary school, and also has a daughter in Taraba State University. But this time around, he is able to pay the 50%. He doesn't have to worry about paying those in primary school and secondary school. So you see, he has been relieved. So it's a welcome idea. So these are all, we could say kudos to the present governor of Taraba State. He has directed me direct, uh, personally as the commissioner of education to write to all tertiary institutions in the state Particularly in my ministry, I have three tertiary institutions under the Ministry of Education, the Taraba State University, the Polytechnic, the College of Education, Zing. But I know also he has directed uh, through health that the School of Nursing and School of Health Tech in Takum, uh, that we write and tell the heads of those tertiary institutions that all school fees and all accommodation fees have been slashed by 50%. So it is for all tertiary uh, students in the states. You know, it is going to ginger a lot of a lot of parents to take their children to school, and by that time, by the grace of God, after before he closed the next four years, most of them will be graduates. Some will also be out of uh, me. We finish their secondary school. We'll be able to get talented uh, uh, students who will be sent abroad or within the country for higher for higher training. Um, the fifty percent reduction has gone a long way for me and my family especially my dad it has helped us a lot because we are four right now in the university and because of this 
massive reduction. I think my workload, my weight on that aspect will be off for my dad. So he might just make his focus probably on my siblings now. My name is Liberty Wakabs. I'm from 100, I'm from um, Department of Civil Engineering. I'm 100 level student. So we like the press, we like the governor because of what he has done in the university. He has helped us reduce down the school fees because things have things has been difficult for us. So the way he did the school fees, although some of the things we were not able to rent house one person, but now because of the reduction of the school fees, I was my father was able to rent an apartment for me due to the reduction of the school fees. I just want God to bless him and keep him more, give him more long life and prosperity so that he will lead us more and more again. Gaskia Rananda Naji, Governor Yarege, school fees, na Skonde, na university, the Skonde school. Nina number one, the Naji dad is so say because Bian couldn't make a tanya Ramuyana Bamuya. Damanache in the next time, in next year, Kila Bramu Ia Muyan Mu Talkoki Bramu Yay Makarantakma because Kudim Makanta Imana Yawa. Now to Natanda Aka Korea Rana, Kudim Makaranta Ba, Kudi in the Zamu Bia Makaranta Ma Alla Yazoya Kaumana, Governor Yazoya Daga, Kudim Makaranta Yaraza Makanta Akuta Rana Nayi Murna Nayi Murna Nashe Alla Yabamu Governor, when does it she shame woman tell Koki? Muma Muya rental cananza mu Macaranta. Allah ya albercache governor mu. Gaskia munji daddy so say. You see a ramuzas jay Macaranta, Harry University. Meeting with all primary school head teachers. And of recent, he called the teachers to come down to have a they, they should just go for orientation so that they can go with the, uh, with the present dispensation of teaching in the schools, in their schools. We have a problem, negligence of the, I mean, some past uh, uh, administration, they have neglected the education so much that the teachers' welfare have not been taken care of. And the teachers too, they have no zeal now to teach. You cannot find them in the school. Just a recent one NYC chap came and said, they posted into a school. When he went there, he couldn't find the principal, neither the teacher there, only a student. And when he asked the children, where is the principal? They could not understand the English, the answer in Hausa, which is very, very, very uh, sad indeed, because the teachers are not there to teach the children. If they are there at all, they don't teach them what they're supposed to teach them. Why? Because they are not taken care of. And you can see the reason the teachers, their pensions and gratuities have been paid. So that is it's, it's a welcome idea, welcome uh, uh, development in the teaching professions. So it's left for them now to, to reprocate uh, what, what he did to them. And I think education will come to stay in Taraba State. I could see even some of the head teachers, some of them were coming to the state capital for the first time. Even the exposure it gave to the teachers alone, they, they have realized coming from their homes, from their villages to Jalingo, they realized that they, this is no longer use business as usual. Something has happened. They have never, some of them have never been close to a governor to stay in the same hall where the governor is. So, and then apart from that, that the governor said he called them, he wants to hear from them. What are their problems? And they had articulated their problems into a speech and gave it to one of them who presented it before the governor and the governor responded to everything that they said. He told them he was happy to see them. The things they asked were not things that uh, even that he imagined. He thought they would ask even greater things. And so that brought a lot of encouragement, a lot of hope, a lot of sense of uh, what to the teachers. They, for the first time, they felt valued. They felt they were important. If the governor will send for all of them to come pay their transport, pay their, uh, pay their night allowances.
So, um, as soon as His Excellency was sworn in, he uh, acknowledged the fact that health sector is an important sector. So, one of the first things he did was to visit the School of Nursing here in Jalingo, where he ordered that the contractor should be brought back to complete the work. And as we speak, the contractor is in the, at the site and work is ongoing. He also, because of uh, the importance of health education in Taraba State, he has ordered for the reduction of the school fees by 50% and the accommodation, accommodation fee by 50% also. So these two things were major um, achievements at the School of Nursing. He also asked us to reduce the school fees in College of Health Technology, Takum, by 50%, and also the accommodation fee also by 50%. Now, His Excellency also has reinstated the running cost for all our health facilities in Taraba State. This is something that has been absent in the past nine years. But upon resumption, he felt it was an anomaly. So he ordered for the reinstatement of the running cost. Now our hospitals have running cost, and our PMOs have assured us that the running cost will be judiciously used to improve the healthcare delivery in Taraba State. Now His Excellency also ordered for the supply of at least three ambulances for now, which we want to uh, test run in Taraba State to see how effective they are. If we see that they are very good, we are going to buy more. Also as part of efforts to support immunization in Taraba State, His Excellency has supported us and we were able to acquire 56 motorcycles, which will be distributed to the various immunization officers across the wards of Taraba State. Governor Kefas, ever attuned to the vitality of youth, has taken an extraordinary step by integrating 15 young minds into his cabinet. This historic decision breathes fresh life into the corridors of power, infusing them with the vibrant energy and innovative ideas of our youth. This inclusivity is not a mere gesture. It is the empowerment of our youth and a testament to Taraba's commitment to harnessing their unique insights and aspirations. There's this saying, the youth are leaders of tomorrow. So he has taken this seriously in his governance because you cannot be a leader tomorrow if you don't start now. So what the governor of Taraba State has done is to employ a lot of youth in his own cabinet. And he has taken few too uh, who are, uh, uh, like we say, elders. But the youth, I think, are more. I think it's a welcome idea. And he is preparing this youth for leadership now and tomorrow. Another good thing is the injection of youth into the cabinet. Because the youths are the people that are having new ideas, new way of doing things. And uh, they will bring a lot onto the table. That single policy is very, very important. We expect our young generation to grow and do more than what we did. So far so good. We are so proud of uh, His Excellency, Dr. Abu Kefas, the governor of Taraba State. Uh, in the day of his uh, inauguration, he said he's going to carry women along in his government. And so far so good. We are so happy about what he has done by appointing seven women in his cabinet and it's not just appointing the seven women appointing seven women to key offices or key ministries in his cabinet so we are so happy and that shows that he's a man of integrity and he's a man that say a thing and he's a talk and do governor 
as I'm talking to you, he has met with the highest uh, supplier of tricycle and motorcycle in Nigeria, which is Wendell International. He met with them and uh, he has invited them to come and invest in Taraba State. In fact, he has partnered with them to see how he can supply us with tricycle and motorcycle in Taraba State for our youths that are on ground to have uh, something doing. Judiciary Matters. The biggest achievement of this administration in the mystery, as it relates to the Ministry of Justice in its first 100 days has to do with the reawakening and the restoration of belief among staff of the Ministry of Justice. When I was sworn in and I resumed as the Attorney General, I saw lawyers that did not look like lawyers. Lawyers that looked like traders. Lawyers wearing shirts. Lawyers not properly dressed. Dressed. I tried to find out and I was told that they had not been paid their rope allowance for two years. So there was no justification to sanction any lawyer for not dressing properly. That is now a thing of the past. If you go to the Ministry of Justice from the gate of the Secretariat, you see lawyers that are lawyers. You see lawyers that are looking like lawyers. Their entire areas of rope allowance was settled, was paid by this government. So that, that by far is my biggest achievement as the Attorney General of Taraba State within the periods uh, that I was sworn in to date. And then there is an ongoing bar conference. If you ask anybody around, the last time lawyers attended bar conference, they cannot remember. If you go to Jalingo now, there is no single lawyer that is not at the conference. They are happily at the conference. They will learn from the conference. And when they go back, it will impact positively on their work as lawyers. And the Tarab and Taraba State will be the beneficiary of this enterprise. I must say here that, that His Excellency has completely transformed the attitude. He has restored faith. There is confidence in the Ministry of Justice. And then the justice system will be the better for it. If you look at what the governor is doing now about security, you don't even have to ask whether he was one time a soldier or not. Because his experience in the army help him to make sure that he's trying to take care of what is known as kidnappers today in this world. Because these days we don't even talk of armed robbers again. We talk of kidnappers and the rest. And if you have enough security in your area, at least you are covered, you have peace. That is why uh, the former governor say, give me peace, I will give you development. So. Uh, if we get the security on ground and we make the state peaceful and we have common unity among the Muslims and the Christians and possibly the, the, uh, our, for our fathers in the villages that they don't go to church or mosques, at least we make sure that we have sanity in the state and everyone is living in a good condition with no problem. So that this small, small fighting here and there will not be done. Legislative matters. He has taken us outside the country for training. He has taken us outside the state for training. And uh, those of us that uh, were in the Ninth Assembly, he has also cleared their, uh, their gratuity. There is nothing we will tell him rather than to say we are grateful and uh, pray. God in his infinite mercy will see him through and uh, uh, support him, give him the knowledge and wisdom to move Taraba to the next level. He has not even stopped here. He has asked us to look for a very good contractor that will renovate the House of Assembly complex. Our work environment will be very decent. Support staffs have been well motivated by clearing their uh, pending outfits, legislators, he has uh, given them uh, the allowance for training.
So what is left? These are the three key areas that uh, we uh, sought his help, we sought his attention to address and he has done that. I think we don't have any excuse rather than to support him by making laws that will lead to uh, good uh, uh, governance. Basically, that is our mandate. Our mandate as legislators is to make laws that will lead to good governance, to support the executives in areas that we, fee we see that is beneficial to Tarabians. This one, we want to assure Tarabians we will do our best to support him so that uh, Tarabians feel the dividends of democracy during his tenure. Civil Service Matters. He has approved the refurbishing of the generator at the State Secretariat, which hitherto has not been working. But now the generator is working and providing light in the whole Secretariat. And again, seven senior civil servants we are sponsored to ask on as part of reforming the civil service. He also approved the purchase of computers in order to facilitate work in the office. I want to say that he has done a very great thing in my office because before this time we were going to commercial centers to type official things, official letters, and it's not quite good. So when these computers were purchased, uh, we are enjoying the work in the office. For about three years, my office was not receiving running costs. But now that running costs has been reinstated, work is ongoing at the Secretariat. And uh, just of recent, he sponsored some officers to Abuja, head of service at the federal uh, head of civil service on fact-finding mission. This is in the beat of reforming the civil service. In the ever-shifting landscape of governance, the first hundred days in the seat of power take on a profound significance. Governor Agbu Kefas, the steward of Taraba State's destiny, embarked on a transformative journey in the nascent days of his tenure, one that holds the promise of reshaping Taraba's destiny. With unwavering resolve and a vision that reaches beyond the horizon, he has etched indelible milestones into the fabric of Taraba, laying the foundation for a promising future for every Taraban. In just 100 days, Governor Kefas has not only laid the foundation, but also sculpted the essence of a new Taraba state. A Taraba where education knows no boundaries, agriculture thrives, connectivity soars, youth voices resonate, governance rejuvenates, retirees are revered, and opportunities flourished. These, accomplished under, these accomplishments underpinned by visionary leadership, unwavering dedication, and a commitment to inclusivity are not merely a foundation, but the seeds of an enduring legacy that Taraba State and its people shall cherish. As we cast our gaze towards the future, we do so with profound confidence, knowing that the first hundred days of Governor Abu Kefas's administration have set the stage for a Taraba that stands stronger, more prosperous, and more inclusive than ever before. With this solid foundation, we march forward into a luminous tomorrow, guided by the enduring spirit of progress. Thank you very much. Other achievements. The reopening of the Ambaba Suntai Airport. Retreat of key governmental functionaries. Renovation of the government house. Creation of the Ministry of Waste Management and Innovations. Medical checkup for monarchs within the state. These and many other feats were recorded during the 100 days of the moving forward train.